So today I'm going to paint a tribute to Queen Elizabeth who died a couple days ago and so let's get started. All right, so Queen Elizabeth died a couple of days ago at the age of 96 and I have to admit I'm into all that palace stuff. You know, all of the gossip, all the real stuff and as well as the uh, the series. <laughs> I mean, I, I know way too much, but I think it's always interesting because they are a family and when the center of a family is gone, it can create all kinds of changes. And so I wanted to paint a tribute to her. She did a, uh, certainly spent a life of service. So the first thing that I do is I make a column of light, medium, and dark, which I've done on the left with that yellow, red, and the blue. Those are the values that I want to hit. Now from here on, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at anything that I see as being dark, anything I see as being medium, and anything that I see as being light. And I'm going to look at those value shapes and just paint the shapes. That's all I'm doing is painting the shapes. Painting the shapes that correspond with the values. So now usually I make lots of value dabs, or I certainly have in the past, and so that piece of paper on the left would just be covered with colors by the end because I had to test them before applying them to the painting, but I've been painting for so long now that I, I almost never have to make a test value dab anymore uh, unless I'm really unsure of what's coming up. But, you know, I took a look at this photograph and it is backlit and I do find backlit photographs sometimes the most difficult, but I thought the stakes are low. You're doing this for you. Let's just, let's just do it. The other thing that's interesting about this photograph is uh, I love the soft colors. Um, but besides that, it was um, how much the green of what she's wearing, that green hat and the green coat, casts different reflections onto her face. And I am finding it interesting to put some different kinds of colors, not values, but different kind of colors into my flesh tones than what I have used before, where I've mainly used sort of variations of reds, oranges, and pinks. So. I thought, okay, this will be a good thing to try because there are going to be some green shapes that show up and I'm going to have to figure out the correct value and shape for those reflections. And I thought that could be fun. So I got started. I'm working on a um, arch paper, which is um, cold press. I always work wet into wet, so I'm not wetting the whole paper. I'm just using wet paint and letting it drift into wet paint, letting so even though I go for value shapes, I do have lost and found edges because I'll put shapes next to each other and then they sort of meld into each other because as you know with watercolor, it just kind of water attracts color and so it will drift toward the, any color that it's next to. So that's what's happening here. I'm using a flat brush, probably a number 12, uh, 12 yeah, because I don't want to get too tight. You know, I'm not looking, I, I'm not a portrait painter, and I'm not looking to get every hair in place. I want to get the essence of the person if I can. And I thought maybe, maybe it was possible with this photograph. So she's starting to, you can see the greens in there, which I find really interesting, especially because the greens are the complementary color to oranges. And so I think it kind of pumps up what would be well, kind of a, it just makes it a more interesting portrait to me to have those complementary colors going on. So now, even though the hat is a light value, uh, I decided to put it in as a medium value instead. Now, I don't usually make that kind of decision. I will usually stick to exactly to, not the colors that the photograph tells me it, that it is, but to the values. But I felt like if I did that, the whole painting would look way too washed out. So I'm gonna plug quite a bit of color into that hat and into that coat, and then I'm gonna to have to make some adjustments at the very end for my darkest darks. And if you look at the actual photograph, there are very few dark darks, very few. So to base the whole painting on my darkest darks was not gonna carry me through. I really had to depend more on more on mid-tones than anything else. This whole painting is, is mostly mid-tones. And I always, even though my sign off is leave the whites of paper white and your paints wet, there's almost no white in this picture. And that's because the light is behind her. So there's no direct sunlight on her face. There's not even any direct sunlight. I don't, I don't think on the hat or, or the coat. I think everything is cast, um, cast shadows or cast light from somewhere else. And uh, I, found, I found it kind of luminescent and kind of fun. And I thought, well, you got to give this a go. Because... Because why not? Why not do that today? 
So now it's time to dry everything. Everything's mapped in pretty good. And so now this is what I call my first pass at a painting. This whole first pass takes, oh, I don't know, maybe a half an hour or so. I don't like to spend a lot of time on my paintings. I do spend more time on sort of analyzing before I start to paint. I want my decisions made before I start painting and try to stick with my strategy as I go through. All right, so, oh, so we're still on the first, this is still my first, uh, my first pass. Well, I'm surprised, I'm belaboring, belaboring a little bit. I'm not sure what's happening here. It might be stalling. You know, I do notice that when I look at these um, videos back, I can kind of see where I can be wasting time a little bit because I'm not sure what to do, which usually means I should clean out my water, <laughs> dry everything up, come back in with fresh eyes. But so far, I haven't seen a, a ginormous mistake going on. I think, I think, and I always have this fantasy that maybe I can, maybe I can get it on the very first try, you know, not have to come back in with some final adjustments, but I have never found that to be true. There's always final adjustments. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing here, but, um, but we'll see. I, so now what's going to happen is I go away and I come back, I, I'm going to, um, clean out my water, get rid of any old paint that's on the palette, and look anew. All right, so there we go. So here we go with the second pass. Now the second pass, as I call it, or the second go, this was only about six minutes. Because I, even when I'm away and cleaning my brush and all of that, I'm still thinking. And I realized I have got to not change the values, not make things lighter or darker necessarily, but the brightness is missing. Things are looking a little bit washed out. And the queen always said, or I have read that she said, that she wanted, she liked wearing these bright colors because, as she said, people came to see the queen and they wanted to make sure that uh, she was in the bright colors so no one could be uh, questioning about who they had come to see. I think she nailed it every time. I don't think we'll see her like again, that's for sure. Now I'm putting in the very darkest of the darks because, like I said, there are very few of them. But if I hadn't put them in, I just wouldn't have the same value range that I want to have. And as you can see, I did not put a lot of value dabs on my test strip, again, because I've just been painting for a long time. If you go back to early videos, you'll see that I, I map out exactly how to do that and, and demonstrate over and over and over again with those value dabs and, and how to place them. But at this point in my life, I'm, I'm just not into that. So now let's look at the final product. I don't remember the queen smiling nearly as much as the photographs that we see these days are showing, but it's nice to see her smiling. Um, I would like to think that she enjoyed her duties because that was her life. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.